Is there anything worth going back and getting? Other than the slick, no. Slick's not even... Looting in Tarkov can be boiled down to the simple process of going into raid, picking up items, and extracting. However, if you want to be great at looting, it's never that simple. And I got 10 tips here that are very likely going to double the amount of loot you can get out of raid with. On top of that, I got a little bonus advice at the end if you stick around and you want to watch that as well. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into them. All right, so tip number one is probably one of my best tips that I can give people, especially those struggling to make money or early in the raid. Some of these things can double, triple, or even quadruple the value of a single slot in your inventory. One that I usually suggest if you're gonna go to the extreme here, you put in your secure container. Now to start off, if you're running around uh, Tarkov, your customs reserve, wherever you may be, and you find one of these, uh, these side mounts for scopes, these uh, scope mounts as you will, but what you can do is you can put a sight on top of them. And some of them, like the Cobra here, you can even put a laser or a flashlight on the side. So now you have a one slot item that has three pieces to it. And you can slip that right into your secure container like that. And whether you die or not, you're gonna get out with all of that money or utility for uh, attachments you can use later. Now this applies to more than just the Cobra mount, right? The Cobra mount's great because it's got the side on it, but even the uh, these things like these dovetail mounts, the P-Lods and stuff can be really good and some of them like the svd low let's say you kill some player who's got attack 30 or some other large scope you can put that right on that svd low and now it's a one slot and now you can put this in your secure container and you have a 30 40 sometimes sixty thousand dollar scope and mount in your container that you can get out with and use later in raid or just sell if you want to make it for the money now to push past this there's a couple of tricks you can do with stuff in your secure container and it involves these three hand guards right here let me move this stuff now the x47 the XRSU, 47SU, this is for uh, AK-74Us, this is for AK platforms, and the Aggressor, all of these are AKs. Um, this one's actually a one slot by itself, but these two can become one slots if you put them on gas tubes. The real quick way is just link search them, go look, find the cheapest gas tube, buy it, and then you can plop it on there. And now this is a one slot item. But the value of these things is how many attachment slots they have. Both of these have the ability to put one scope and one uh, other optic or two small optics. So for example, I can take these two red dots and put both of them on that, that uh, X47 along with two lasers and a grip. And this can sit in your secure container. We'll go to one, we'll go to a one slot here. The same thing works for the X74U. These are essentially the same um, in what they can do. But one thing I wanna show you is on the back of these, where right now we have a, uh, a uh, holographic, you can actually put a assault scope on these. So it's just one thing to keep in mind um, as you're, uh, you're doing stuff in raid, there's a way to get more slots. And that's gonna lead into our next tip, tip number two. Now, when it comes to chest rigs, these are great for expanding the amount of value you have in your backpack, all the way from very simple ones like the scav vest and the idea rigs, all the way up to some of your best armored rigs like the class 5 CPC. Now the, the advantage of these is how they increase the amount of slots in your inventory with the exception of the scav vest, but I'll talk about that in a second. So for example, a bank robber, right? These are ones you find on scavs a lot. These bottom six or these top six here, you find a lot and even some of these, but this thing takes up six slots, but if you open it up, it has eight slots. So you can fit eight pieces of inventory, eight slots of inventory into your backpack for six slots. Now the scav vest is a one for one. It gives you six slots and it is itself six slots. If you look at it here, let me click on the right button. But the value of the scav vest is it's worth 16,000, 20,000, sometimes 30,000 rubles because people don't know about the barter or don't pay attention to it or don't care. But even like the TV 106, the TV 109 rig, it gives you one extra slot this one's 10 and it takes up nine so it gives you one extra with a little uh four uh, two by two in here which can be valuable and you get through some of these others like the umac right this gives you 16 slots and it only takes up four along with the fact of having a big four slot in there and then you get into the triton commandos rigs these three here are all the same right they all have 16 slots they all take up 12 so it adds basically another four slots for you the azimuths are these new rigs they added in the most recent wipe and these things are great i love finding these things because they have 20 slots and they only take up 12. it kind of flows the same thing with the blackrock and the mk3 rig they're both 20. the blackrock arguably arguably you could say has more utility because it has the two by two but even finding these mk3s are great because even going to you know you're selling them on the flea market for twenty six thousand or selling them to ragman and you get an additional you know twenty six thousand to him too man i should twenty seven thousand almost 
and it doesn't take care of any, you actually gain space. So you get a lot more money out of that space in your inventory. And as you go down, you've got more rigs like this one here, but then you get into your armored rigs. Now you have to keep in mind with armored rigs, they do add a ton of weight. They are very heavy things. You know, the AVS itself is eight pounds. The TV 110 is 10 pounds. The CPC is 12 pounds almost, or quilt kilograms. I was using freedom units, sorry. Uh, but they give you a ton of space and they all give you 23 slots of somewhere to put stuff in your inventory. So this is almost doubling the amount of space just with that rig. So if you have higher strength or you have a mule stem on you, you could potentially walk out of here with four rigs like this and have an unbelievable amount of loot on you. Now, the next one I have is a little bit simpler for you, but it matters just as much, especially if you're struggling for money. Recruits, day packs, scav backpacks, all of these sell for decent money to the traders and sometimes even a lot more on the flea market. You know, a scav backpack can go for 14, 15,000. Your recruits push 20,000. For whatever reason, they're same slot, same backpack. But at the end of the day, they're worth money, especially if they're found in raids. So if you're killing scavs and you're finding these backpacks and you're running a recruit and you find a scav backpack, take that scav backpack, fill it up, put it in your inventory. Now you find another day pack out there. You can take that day pack and put that inside the scav backpack. And in the same amount of slots, it makes looting a little bit more difficult. I'm not gonna say it doesn't because you kind of have to swap loot around, but now you're really picking up how much uh, extra money you're getting out of the raid with without any more slots in your inventory. Stacking stuff is your friend. Make sure you're always remembering that as you're finding stuff around in the raid. All right, so the next one I wanna talk about is a, a fallacy, a, a logical misunderstanding of how loot in Tarkov works and how people make choices in loot they want to keep. Now, this is kind of a, a junky raid, if you will, probably like an interchange raid or maybe a customs raid, where this is the loot you have in your inventory, right? And you find something else. Like, let's say you come along and you find a Helix, and this Helix is worth, uh, I think they're worth about 10K, but they're worth, we'll say 10K, right? And you've got wires, and wires are worth seven or 8K, right? But you say, okay, I need the wires for a craft. So I'm gonna keep the wires. I wanna use the wires to craft something or I need it for my hideout. So that's more valuable to me, right? Well, the problem is, is at the end of the day, you're better off taking this out, keeping this, selling the Helix and buying your wires. Because even with the flea market fee, if you sell your Helix at 10,500 rubles, we'll do this real quick so you guys can just see it. You know, you're getting 9,900, 9,800 out of that Helix. So you're 2,000 ahead, even if you go and buy yourself a thing of wires. So just because you need something doesn't mean it's more valuable or that you can use it in a craft. Finding an array isn't free. There's an opportunity cost to everything you don't pick up that's worth more. The exception to that is like, let's say you need T-plugs, right? T-plugs are not worth anything, but there is a, 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 a task that requires you to find T-plugs. If that's the case, then keep them. But just because you need something in a hideout, you know, if you find bolts, and there's the bolts are worth more than anything else you have in here. Fleece, duct tape. You better be taking that, that tape measure out and swapping bolts. I don't care if you want to make a purple backpack. You can buy 10 measuring tapes for that one thing of bolts and they take up the same slot. So always make sure you're taking the most valuable loot out of raid for stuff that you don't need for tasks or found in raid because it's always easier just to buy it and make that difference in money at the end of the day. Another quick tip, so when you're running around Tarkov, let's say you're full of loot, you're headed for extract, you run into a scav, you shoot him, right? And But you're curious, maybe he's got a red key card on him, maybe he has something valuable, but you're he's kind of out in the open, you're already full of loot, you don't wanna worry about it. Well, one thing I do is I run up to that scav and I just loot him real quick and then keep off running. Just run up, hit F and keep going. And then I look in that little screen down in the bottom right for how much XP I got out of looting him. It's 50, 70, 80, even like 110, whatever. I'm just going to keep going. But if you see like 180, sometimes like 250, because maybe it was a player scab who had been looting, you know he's got a bunch of loot on him because that XP is directly proportional to the loot that he has on him. So if you see a high number, maybe it's time to go reevaluate, clear your surroundings, and actually check his backpack real quick to make sure he doesn't have like a Bitcoin or an OFZ shell or something inside his bag that's definitely worth going back for. All right, the next one revolves around how to loot a little bit quicker, especially on players you kill and sometimes scavs or raiders. But one of the things a lot of people don't know is the control and alt click trick. For example, if you alt click anything and you have room in your inventory to wear it, to equip it. So if it's a, a rig, a vest, glasses, you know, face cover, any of this stuff that you can actually equip, not something that goes into inventory. So like I can't like, for example, I can't alt click this mag it doesn't do anything, right? 
But if I control click it, it goes into the inventory. We'll talk about that in a second. But alt clicking, so you see, you kill a player, right? And he's got a gun in his bag. Well, you can alt click, and that's going to put it right into your secondary. Same thing with a, a face mask or sunglasses. Alt click. I'm alt clicking on all of these. They will equip right away. So this is useful when looting other players to getting stuff into your inventory real quick. On top of that, instead of like fighting to get like if you got an empty black rock and you're filling stuff one at a time trying to do this, you don't have to do that. You can just drag and drop right on to the top of the picture, and it'll fill that thing up fast. Now it's going to go to the first available slot. So like single items went there. So when you're doing this, make sure you're picking your doubles first and your singles last, because that will put them in there faster, uh, more cleanly because you're using up the bigger slots. Same thing with the four. That's why I did that propane so early is because it went right into that four slot. So just keep that in mind. It will put it in the first available. Like it doesn't care right here that there's a one slot. It's going to put it in that first available slot that it has versus that. And then you're stuck, even though it's the same amount of loot. Tip number seven revolves around insurance fraud. Now insurance fraud, I, I don't wanna get into the argument of insurance is good or not, because it's a, it's a huge discussion. It depends on who you are, who you play with, what maps you're on, what gear you run. It's an incredibly complicated discussion. But if you do use insurance, make sure you're insurance fraud in your stuff when you have the opportunity. If you find somebody with an equal or even slightly lesser helmet or armor or rig, or even the same backpack, Usually you want to find a place to go throw yours in the bushes, hide it somewhere and go use theirs because not only are you going to get your stuff back, now you got their stuff. And if you die later in raid, you're not risking losing your stuff. You know, if, you, if, if you're on your way to extract and you run into another player, the only thing you're going to lose is the stuff that you took from a player who died instead of the, you know, all of your gear as well. Now, tip number eight uh, has to do with proning while looting. So you can crawl up on bodies, you can loot certain things while prone, but if you crawl up to a crate, a cache, any kind of container and try to loot it, it's gonna make you stand up. So there's a small delay from when you hit the loot button, and if you hit X or whatever your uh, your button is to lay prone and hold it, you will lay down in the process of opening that container up. Now this makes you a little bit less easy to see, but there's also a lot of places uh, in, in the world where you do this and you're behind cover. So if somebody does see you, you can loot and not get shot at, and it gives you a chance to get away if they do kind of start you know, shooting at you, throwing grenades at you. You're not just instantly dead because you were sitting there like a sitting duck. So it takes a little bit of practice, but after you hit that F button on opening a filing cabinet or a green weapon box, hold X and you will lay down uh, while you're looting. Tip number nine is one that I use a lot, and it's having your weapon slot empty. And the reason is, is if you kill scav bosses, sometimes regular scavs, they have some of these melee weapons that are worth 30, 40, 50, 60,000 rubles. And if you die, that's like a secret container. It doesn't matter that you found it in raid. As soon as you put that on your sheath, if you die, it's yours. So if you're, you know, especially on woods, you don't want to be running with a good weapon on woods because if you happen to kill Sturman and he's got a red rebel, what are you going to do? You're going to put your good weapon in your bag and run around with the red rebel? It just depends on who you are. And even down to the little knives and stuff like that, it might seem like peanuts, but you get those knives out of raid, you sell them to Jaeger, the little brown handled ones that are not worth much, then, you know, it's that little extra couple thousand rubles you get out of raid even if you die, which helps. You know, hundreds and hundreds of raids, if you've got thousands of thousands of rubles each raid that you got out of that you died, you know, you're talking hundreds of thousands of rubles over the long run. Now, the last one is, is to deal with taking attachments off of guns and, and multiple things that you can do with that. So the first thing is if you find a gun in raid, uh, and you don't have any more room for it, right? Like, let's just say, let's just say we're full. Like we, we have, we're like this, and we have no room for guns. Make sure you take off the attachments because a lot of different firearms have several places you can put attachments. So you can just, what you do is if you grab your, we'll grab this laser light, let me move this. You hover around and you find one that turns green and you can slap that laser right on top of there. You know, some guns, if it depends on if they have rails on them or not, they can hold four or five more lasers, especially things like uh, MP7s. MP7s are probably one of the best little guns to do this with, because if you find a grip, a laser, a, a sight, all of those things can attach onto these side rails that are hard mounted permanently, and you can get more slots out of it. And at least you get the attachments off the gun. You might not be able to take the whole gun, but you can get some of the parts off of it at least. Now to expand on that, Sometimes you don't have enough slot for a full gun and it's got a bunch of cool attachments and we'll, we'll do the AKM first here, right? Like, let's say this is how you're sitting. You're having a great raid. You killed another guy with this awesome AKM and you want to take it. But now you're stuck between picking between the fuel and this. You're really not. And you don't even have to throw everything out because you can take the Zukov off. And this is with AKs. You got to watch for it. Not every gun will allow you to take the, uh, the stock off, but you can. And now it'll fit. So now you got that gun and all those parts in there. You're not throwing anything away. Sometimes you have room in your Blackrock or your CPC to throw it in just like that, and you're golden. So 
the other side of this is with uh, uh, suppressors, right? So that was the stock. Suppressors like M4s, this doesn't fit. And I know I'm making this a specific setup and there's other ways you could do this. Just bear with me here. Just to show you for an example, a lot of times if you have a gun that just won't fit in a bag, you take the suppressor off and now it fits. And then you take the suppressor and you put it in there or put it right there and you're ready to go. You can get that whole piece of that whole gun out of there and not have to worry about leaving it behind or parting it out for attachments or anything like that. All right, so that wraps up the video. Um, I tried to keep it as short as I can for you guys. I know it drug out a little bit long, uh, but I wanted to really get into some of these, these tips for you. Um, one last piece of advice I have, and it's something that I'm even struggling with. It's the fact that not as good a loot or not a full bag is still better than dying. Don't get too caught up looting. Don't sit in one place for too long, especially if you've been shooting because players are gonna come looking and seeing what's going on and trying to find you. Get in, get out. If you don't get everything, that's fine. Getting out with 300 or 400,000 rubles versus loot when if you'd stayed 10 minutes longer and you got another 100,000 or 150,000 is usually not a good idea. You wanna get in, you wanna get out, you wanna survive your raid because at the end of the day, that is far better than dying with a million rubles or the loot on you. I know it sounds obvious, but it's something most of us have to remind ourselves constantly because you get that little loot goblin going and you're seeing lots of loot and you wanna get as much of it as you can, but you're gonna get, you're gonna risk dying if you sit around for too long. But that's pretty much it, wraps up the video. Quick shout out to the Patreons as always, those guys are great supporters of the content here and I'm greatly appreciative of it. And I'm greatly appreciative of all of you that watch the videos and support the channel. So good luck out there and we'll see you in the next video.